Yo, what is going on, everybody? This is Mystical, and today I'm bringing you a Monk Trainer on how to survive against two melee, more specifically, Walking Dead today. I got this comment the other day saying that this guy was struggling against a double melee, uh, I think it was DK Fury Warrior. Now, this isn't DK Fury Warrior, but it's pretty much the same concept. And yeah, let's just get right into it. So, here are my talents. It is standard. I'm using uh, Ancient Mystery of Arts versus The Walking Dead. There are two different ways you can play against uh, Walking Dead. The first one, I know you can't see right now, is against teams that don't have the standard Hodge setup. So against Pallies or Mystery of Monks that have a stun every 45-ish seconds, give or take, because the, the Paladin can use Judgment to reduce the cooldown on Hodge. But pretty much... Against teams that don't have a stun outside of leg sweep that would force you way of the crane, I use AMA. If I was playing against a paladin, I'd probably play way of the crane because you get way of the crane the first hodge, and then once you're off stun here, you get a human ratio because I do play human. If you're orc, just play orc relent. They shouldn't be able to go you. They just shouldn't be able to kill you, to be honest. Um, yeah, nothing really crazy. You know, chi wave, chi torpedo. Mr. Up Leg Sweep. Leg Sweep is really good for peeling yourself when the DPS are off stun DR. Really good. Even if they're on stun DR, giving you an extra, what, two or three seconds to get away, heal without any interrupts. It's really important. You can run Ring of Peace if you're playing on Blade's Edge Arena. That's fine. It's actually really good on Blade's Edge. You can Ring a Peace them off the edge or towards the ramp area, which is more than okay. Healing Elixirs, just because they're going to get you low. Walking Dead will get you low. It's going to be scary, but you will be fine. They, unlike some comps their damage can be pretty limiting once the windwalker doesn't have burst damage and they've used the fist of fury uh they do have some limited damage uh summon jade sermon statue it's the row really you can play chiji if you want and this one the only thing i changed i used manatee but you, you i should thinking again you should go focus thunder these games aren't long at all like they're they're not long they will not last long at all so you should definitely play focus thunder you won't run out of mana and let's just play the video because I did a little editing to it. And then these should be my honor talents right here. So I'm running Trinket. I am human. So I'm running Trinket and Human Racial. If you're Orc, you can play Orc Relent. If you're any other... Uh, unfortunately, if you're any other race, you're going to die. <laughs> like That's just how it is. If you only have one Trinket versus the Walking Dead, you're, you're actually dead. You're actually dead. Now, here's something you, that you should do. Now, you don't know for sure if the walking dead's going to swap to you a little fun fact we actually beat this walking dead the previous game and they went on my death night we won so and i still ran the same setup so the reason i went defender again is because and even the game before is because no matter what no matter against double melee there's always potential for them to swap to you no no matter what it, it doesn't matter what you're playing if you're playing against double melee it doesn't matter who they're on they could easily swap to you and kill you in a stun um that's why I prefer Defender of the Week versus Double Melee. It gives you a lot of time. It's a lot easier to recover with Defender of the Week, in my opinion. Um, I like Defender versus Double Melee. Uh, Eminence. For one, you're playing against a Windwalker. Because, and he has port. And if he matches your port, it's going to be hard to free cast if he port kicks you and then Death Knight Wraith walks over to you and, and you have no time to recover. So short port makes your port shorter than the Windwalker's. So at least you have what? Four to five seconds of recovery time, or maybe he just completely ignores you after you port. That does mean you can be slowed, so just remember that because you're not using Elon's gift. Ancient Mystery of Arts, like I mentioned previously, you can run Way of the Crane if they have stuns outside of your Way of the Crane. Classes like Holy Paladin, classes like Holy Priest, Mistweaver Monks all have stuns on a 45 cent cooldown. I for Holy Priests. Depends. It depends on the serendipity, but yeah. It depends on how many times that you smite. But yeah, they pretty much have a 45 seconds done. Could be sooner. And yeah, so I like AMA. I'm playing against Rest of Shaman Walking Dead right now. So they don't have that stun. They do have Cap Totem, but you should be able to avoid it or your team should be able to kill it. Uh, yeah, and then Chrysalis, obviously, for the short bubble. Fortune turn for the single target healing. You don't have any docs to spell. Refreshing Breeze, you're never going to use Vivify. Before I get into the gameplay, I just want to talk about your cooldowns and your team's cooldowns that you can use while the other team is bursting or while they're using their cooldowns. So your cooldowns, you got a few of them. You have Fortifying Brew, which is your damage reduction spell. It's pretty good. Minute and a half cooldown. You have your Cocoon, which is a minute and a half cooldown. It's really good. Use that if that's, you know, 
one of your last cooldowns. It's definitely something they're waiting for you to use. And finally, you have Revival. It's pretty good if you don't want to juke kicks, because there are three kicks, obviously, because there's a rest of Shaman, so Wind Shear is an, an interrupt. So those are your major cooldowns. Obviously, your mobility is a defensive. You you could cheat torpedo, you could port. But your major cooldowns are Cocoon, Fortifying Brew, and Revival. Now, as far as your team, I am playing TSG. Obviously, it depends on what you're playing. But my warrior has a few. Uh, he could be running dual disarm. But because, as I said previously, this team went my death knight before and not me, I don't believe he was running dual. I think he was running disarm, though. I could check with him. I am honestly not too sure. He also has intimidating shout, which is a fear. Now, depending on your overall game plan, it depends on how you use it. If you want pressure on the DPS, you'll be using the fear on the shaman. But obviously, if I'm in trouble and I need help, fear could be a last resort. Definitely good because it's not dispellable. And, you know, we got a little bit of cleave damage, but obviously if you call it out soon, it's not going to break. So that's really good. So that's what he has for defensive. And finally, Death Knight, even though it seems like they don't have that much utility, they actually do. If they're far enough away, like let's say they get to me and I chi torpedo chi torpedoed away, there is a Death Grip that he could use in the Fist of Fury to really reduce the amount of damage they do. And they also have Anti-Magic Zone, which is a 60% damage reduction on spell damage. Now that's super good for not the Windwalker so much, but the Frost Death Knight on Pillar of Frost is actually insane because most of their damage is Frost Magical Damage. So it's actually really good for uh, Death Knight damage. So try and call that out to prevent a Trinket, Life Cocoon, a Wall. Your cooldowns are more important than theirs because you don't have to call it out. You just, you know, you do it. So call theirs out. All right, let's get right into the gameplay. So... As a mystery, but obviously you're going to want to put down your port behind a pillar somewhere, you know, where you can feel safe and avoid any interrupts and put down your statue right off the bat. You can see that the monk is coming in hot. They're coming in hot. Now, again, my, they went my death knight last game. So I was expecting them maybe to change it up a little bit, maybe CC more, maybe land a grip more, stummy more. But this team actually just full on decides to just swap to me. And the first rule that I just, I, if no matter what healer you play, if two DPS are swapping to you or training you to the dirt from start to finish, just don't panic, okay? It's it's a little bit more difficult. You have to juke more. You have to position a little better, but do not panic at all. You're fine. You you can do it. I, I know in lower MR matches, maybe sub 2K, maybe 2100, a lot of double melee teams just train the healer. And it can be tough for some. I know, I trust me, I play Mr. River. I, I know what, what it's like. But do not panic, okay? Just rotate your cooldowns. It's just another game. You'll be fine. So I cheat torpedo immediately immediately away. You can see my port is here. Now, the reason I cheat torpedo away is because, obviously, they have uh, Walking Dead is on-demand burst, which means they're going to in-cap me. The, the Windwalker is going to stun me. And then he's just going to Serenity or Stormworth and Fire. And the, the DK is just going to Pillar of Frost. Like, they, they can just spread off the bat. So I port it away or cheat torpedo it away. So when... Slash if they burst when they connect to me, I could just port away behind the pillar and I could just free cast heal for maybe two or three seconds before the Windwalker ports or they, they connect back onto me. So that's why. Now, if you play any other healer and you see them charging onto you, see them, you know, kind of touching you a little bit and you, you think they're going to swap to you. If you're a druid, go bear for him. If you're a shaman, put on earth shield. If you're a disc priest, put cast one or two clarity of wills on you, you know, just preemptively. Just be ready, you know, just always be prepared. So, you, But you can see I cheat torpedo so that I can port away when they connect to me, which is what you should be doing against uh, even single melees. You just port them or kite them away. So you can see I cheat torpedoed away. The monk will have a much easier time than the DK to connect to you. The monk damage is pretty scary, but manageable. They do have limited damage. Windwalkers have limited damage. They run out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So if it's just the Windwalker on you, don't be don't be afraid to be a little greedy. You know, it's the DK that does have some insane damage. So they connect to me. In cap breaks. I could have instantly ported here, but uh, I get stunned. So the first stun. This is the first stun of the game. This sets the pace for the rest of the game. Now he's running. You'd say Stormworth and Fire. So it's not Serenity. So he does have to use some globals to get some chi. That's what that that's what that means. So it's not just hundred 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 percent down to like like thirty. 
from Serenity by the Windwalker alone. Also, I don't see Touch of Death yet. So if you're playing Way of the Crane, you should probably use it right now. You want it to line up with Leg Sweep pretty easily. And so they're on the same cooldown, so you're never stuck in stuns outside of Way. I'm AMA, so I can human racial this. But for one, the death line isn't even near me right now. I'm pretty sure he's still behind the pillar, slowed by the, my DK. And the monk stunned me, but isn't using touch of death on me yet. So there's no reason to. I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop low. Real low. Like really low. But it's fine. So you can see the death knight right here isn't even connected to me yet you could see okay so you could see how i was talking about fear before we just used our fear offensively on the shaman so we can get pressure on the windwalker right here so they come down it's on and they, right there touch of death the windwalker this was actually a good team this was actually a good team um i think at about 22 2300 mmr the first day of the season so i mean the rating inflation isn't even there yet so i mean this was a good team he uses touch of death with 1.4 seconds left in the stun, and the DK isn't even there. This is, you don't trink it. Do not trink it this. Save trinket for touch of death, but if it's a touch of death like this, you don't need to trink it. So you can see, the death knight finally connects to me at 58% health. I'm in range of my port. I wait for the stun, I port, he karmas. So you can see, out of one fear on the shaman, with still three seconds left, we got karma. It's, it's great. And I was able to port, touch of death is still on me, but... I can free cast right now. I'm free casting. The monk ports. I get away. There's fist. A little bit of a range. I mean, that's okay. Kind of stinks. But I was able to free cast a little bit. Touch of death is off. I juked the windwalker. So now I can somewhat free cast. You can see the shaman pushes in offensively. He's The shaman is going to be purging and wind sharing me as much as often as he can. And the DK still isn't even in range of me, but he does have a range kick. Remember that. DKs have a range kick. So even though I'm away right now, he can still kick me. Right there, I'm able to juke the the Shaman and the DK. So before, right when the gameplay started, when I told you that when DPS sit on you, you're going to have to juke more, you're going to have to juke more. It, it if, you're, if you get kicked often, you're, you will die. That in it, it's it's a sad reality, but damage is so high right now. You have to learn to juke. Just use a uh, stop casting macro. I promise it works. So yeah, I was able to juke all three kicks. I am defender of the week. You see the defender proc because I dropped below fifty percent. So you can free cast. I'm also on stun DR because he just used leg sweep and fist of fury. So let's continue. I was able to juke all the kicks. I can free cast. You could see. Let's just go back real quick right here. So you can see, oh, no, let's go back a little bit further, maybe two or three seconds. I put Enveloping Mist on myself here. Right here, you see the Enveloping Mist? I forgot to, to put Renewing Mist on myself here. It That 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 sucks. It, it's actually a really bad feeling. It's a waste of mana. It's a waste of a global. So the Shaman is able to snipe the Enveloping Mist instantly, right there. He instantly got that Enveloping. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm going to try and cheat Torpedo LOS of the Death Knight. So I could free cast. He's because he has a grip. Grip is available. So that's why. Uh, I put an enveloping mist on myself. Still no kicks are available. Shaman is even LOS is out of LOS. DK is LOS. I just I'm dealing with the monk. And I'm able I'm fine right now. He's just gonna spam root. He's gonna spam slow you. It's fine. And now my DPS decided to go, hey, if they want to train our our misweaver, let's train the shaman. The shaman doesn't have trinket because he got stunned by my Death Knight's Pillar of Frost or Remorseless Winter. So now the this will, this also prevents the shaman from purging you, because um, he's gonna have to heal himself instead of purging. So now the DK is just gonna come on me. That's also his anti magic zone. And here we go. I think the spam roots you're just gonna get rooted. And also we're running short port, so uh, we don't have Yulon's gift talent, which means we won't dispel dispel slows with Chi torpedo. So we're stunned here. He's stunning me, so he's stunning me when a DK is like one or two seconds away from connecting on me. So these fists, these leg sweeps, they're actually a waste. Or they're not a waste, they're getting pressure, but they're not getting enough pressure. So you're going to drop, you know how I said, you're going to drop low. I'm at 18% right now. I walled, when did I wall? I walled 20, 23 seconds ago. So my wall's down now. I poured it away. I reset my port here, so let me just go back to when I did that, because I actually missed that. 
So right here, key, a key thing about the port, the transcendence port, is that you have an artifact ability called Eminence, and it makes your port right here, the little spirit guy, it slows enemies, I think, by, I honestly don't remember the slow. I think it's a 60, 70% slow. And so I see the DK coming around the corner, and I'm going to go around this corner because he's going to be slowed when he turns this corner and still slowed over here. So I have time, still more time to free cast. You can see right over here, he's coming in, ready? He gets slowed right there, and I still have time, which is really good. It buys me time. The monk fists me right here, which is fine. DK still slowed by my, by my port, connects to me. Now, now it's a ton of damage. He just popped Pillar of Frost because he just finally is able to connect to me and he finally gets a stun on me. Keep going. And there's the port. So we have Defender of the Week up. Monk port. Monk didn't reset his port. DK is over here. We're LOS. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go around this corner right here. Oh. Cheat Torpedo away. And try and put... And just try and create some distance. Unfortunately, he grips me and is able to get the stun on me. I was not able. I did not save a global for the dispel on myself of the Remorseless Winter. So they do get my cocoon here. Which is fine. That's okay. They go straight through the port. They go straight through the cocoon, by the way. I'm stunned again. And I took all three kicks right here. All three. So you'll see Omnibar right here. Right here. Omnibar. Again. Just to stop casting macro, you could you could use this on any healer you want. If you could fake cast flashlight, healing wave, regrowth, um, clarity of will. Even though dis priest, I hate you because you have two healing schools, man. I'm so jealous. Um, but you could see all kicks are available. You can see the shaman just popped um, ascendance. No touch death for 20. The this is DK's pillar. Seven seconds left right here. They both have their trinkets, which is kind of important. And yeah, so right here. It around 40%. He's gonna get another stun on me, which is actually really annoying. But I'm able to juke all three, all three kicks, and still get the enveloping mist off. I love Mist Reaver so much. I really do. So I'm at 19%. This is what I'm talking about. Do not panic. Just you're at 19%. Look, the DK has six seconds left on burst. The Windwalker, I mean, doesn't have um, touch of death for 19. Storm Earth and Fire for two minutes don't panic you're you're fine right so just keep doing you i dropped down to 11 percent and but you're able to free cast because you're you're off stunned here right the dk just stunned you twice the windwalker stunned you with fist of fury you can't get stunned for uh, 20 seconds now you cannot get stunned and human racial and trinket are still available you just don't have cocoon which is rough or wall for 55 seconds so yeah you're fine now. You dropped to eight percent, and there. And now I'm like, all right, guys. Guess what? Uh, I'm gonna need a little help here. So my DK drops his AMZ towards the end of the burst for the DK. I stand in it a little bit, but the tricky thing about a Windwalker, by the way, even with renewing mist enveloping, the Shaman still purged uh, both those buffs. The thing about Mist Weaver is I can't stand in this bubble for long. Uh, you, I, you, the point of a Mist Weaver is to avoid taking as much damage as you can. So if I'm standing here in the AMZ, even though it's a great damage reduction, I'm just going to die because I should be porting, rolling away. So stand in the AMZ as much, as comfortable as for as long as you can, but obviously you're yeah, going to have to keep kiting. So I stay in the AMZ, I actually backtrack a little bit, but obviously there are no kicks available. So I'm able to free cast in the bubble with the damage reduction. So that's great. That's actually great. And now we're just, we're just spam healing. Uh, Renewing Mist, developing... And then F use F use for the fortune turn talent. And yeah, I'm staying here. Why not? I'm rooted. I poured away the root. They're obviously they're able to connect to me pretty easily because we're staying around this one pillar. The um Windwalker is able to flying serpent kick away. And you could see right here, four seconds left on touch of death. So what that means is the burst is coming. He's been saying saving his second charge of Storm Earth and Fire for this second touch of death. However, I still have both my trinkets. So he incaps me here, but he has to kite away to his healer because obviously look he's at twenty five percent. No karma no karma. No karma for a few, but the decay's on me now, so Obviously, it's okay. Right here, I should have incapped one of them, I think. But I, I'm pretty sure. So I do DK there. 
I'm pretty sure I, I human ratio and I stun here. Yeah. Uh, that got both trinkets. Look at that. Look at that. I human ratio the Fist of Fury because the, they're both connecting to me. And the Shaman's on top of me spam purging. So I'm, I won't be able to get any heals off. Plus, I got two kicks available. So obviously, it's okay. Plus, I'm on stun yard now. So he has to wait 20 more seconds for uh, touch of death full stun yard. So that's great. And I'm able to cheat torpedo away. And look, I don't care. I don't care how far away I get from my team, right? Like, they, they've been focused on me. They got my defensive, but my DK still has, um, oh, no. His fortifying, what, what is it? I honestly, I forget. I, I just call it wall. And look, my parry on the warrior still has it. So it, it's great. They both still have their defensive. We don't have fear, though, but which is fine. But we still have, we don't have AMS as well. But we have our major defensive, is what I'm trying to say. So I can get as far away as I want, which I do. <laughs> I get as far away as I can from this team. I could put re-put port here. No. Um, so as I was saying before, see here, I cheat torpedo before I get here. But always save one cheat torpedo. Save your Displacer Beast. Save your Gust of Wind for the Death Grip. That, that's their setup. That's how, that's how they get to me. So I could have put a port here. Which I didn't. My port is still over here, so I can stay with my team. So if they connect to me and we still want damage, uh, I can stay with my team. Grips me. Cheat torpedo away pretty easily. These guys still don't have um, trinkets. I'm pretty sure I incapped the DK here just so he can't get to me. Obviously, they're struggling over there. This DK, the DK can't 1v1 you. And I'm pretty sure that's just how the Windwalker just dies. Uh, they might have gotten Spirit Link, but it doesn't even matter. Just execute. And that's pretty much... That's how you do it. That's, that's pretty much... I'm sorry if this video is longer. Um, so, let me just hit some key points throughout... Um, yeah, let me hit some key points for you guys that want to, like, a little TLDR. Uh, put a timestamp on it. So, when you're playing against Double Melee, make sure you port... Make sure you're playing Defender of the Week. No matter if they go you or not, like in previous games, or if you don't think they'll swap to you, play Defender. Because if they go you, Defender is insane. You can recover so quickly, and it's great. Now, if you also have to juke more. If you get kicked, find an ability that you could use while kicked. As a Mistweaver, you could cheat Torpedo. You can in-cap. You can leg sweep if you get kicked. So use those abilities when you get kicked. If I was to get kicked at all, I would in-cap the DK because we're not on him. If I do get kicked and I don't have in-cap, I would stun. Even though it messes up stun DR, it still gives you buys you a few seconds to get away from the team. Juking is crucial. Positioning is crucial. Use your teammates as help. They have tools. Every class has utility. People make fun of DKs saying, oh, they don't have utility. AMZ actually saved my butt. I was at 8%. But I had 60% reduced damage from AMZ, or spell damage from the AMZ. Uh, warriors have fear, disarm, duel. I mean, every class has utility. Use it. You know, you're a healer. That doesn't mean you, it's your 1v3 and, you know, you can't get help. Your DPS can absolutely help you. And most of all, just don't panic. Do, just don't panic. I, I play a lot of looking for group on my alt monks. I Obviously, I play melee cleaves because I'm a mistweaver. Some games we just play TSG and sit the whole and sit the holy priest or the disc priest or the holy paladin because honestly they they panic. Just don't panic. You try and fake even though you're low health because you should you should be you should have the peace of mind to be able to free cast if you juke that last kick. By the way, these guys did have green enchant, so this they were a pretty good team. And yeah, I know this is tough. If you're playing Way of the Crane, obviously this matchup can be a little bit easier. Uh, if you're playing it, I would probably play Way of the Crane against a Holy Paladin or a Windwalker Monk, Mistweaver Monk healer, because they have that stun when you don't have Way of the Crane off stun DR. So yeah, I hope this helps. I know double melee just is just terrible sometimes, and I know people say when Mistweavers have so much mobility, how how can double melee touch you? But they can eventually connect to you, and one stun is all it takes. I've died in the Stormbolt. <laughs> I've died in the Stormbolt before, so. Yeah, uh, I hope this helps. This video helps. Um, that's pretty much it. I hope everyone is having a great weekend. Have, hope everyone's having a great Sunday, a great Saturday. Um, thank you, Pleb Central, for putting out that thumbnail video because uh, 
two thumbnails down and I am loving doing the thumbnails. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you later. More specifically today against The Walking Dead, I got this comment right here. So right before I get into the gameplay, I just want to talk about what your cooldowns are and what your team cooldowns are while that you can. So before I get into the gameplay, I just want to talk about the cooldowns you have and your team to. So before I talk, get. All right, let's get right in. Okay. All right, let's get right into the gameplay. And 